Welcome to Linux in a Shell episode 16, top part 4 alternate window displays. My name is Dan Washko, I'll be your host today, and this is the final episode on top, and it's the one that'll probably lend itself to the most visual. We're going to be talking about uh, alternative window, alternate window display mode and also colored syntax highlighting. Uh, remember, if uh, you have not watched the other three episodes, uh, head on over to the website, linuxinashell.org. Uh, if you have, um, and you haven't read the write-up on the fourth episode, please do so after you watch the video and, and listen to the audio to get a further understanding of the top command. Top, when you first start it up, shows the default mode where there's a summer area at the top and a task area at the bottom, and the summer area is about a quarter of the screen, if that, and task area it shows a lion's share of the top window that you have open and take note up at the upper left hand corner up here it says top right there okay so if I, I there's another mode that top has which is called alternate window display and that's entered by hitting shift a when you hit shift a it takes you into the alternate window display where the task area is now broken up into four field groups and you can see up in the upper left hand corner that it has changed from saying top to the name of the field group that you're currently in okay so just be aware of that and that says one colon def for default that name of that field group is called default right now you can navigate between the individual field groups by using the a and w key so if i press a it goes down up actually up the field group number but down the top window list so it goes from one to two and then hit a again goes from two to three hit a again goes three to four and then when i hit a on four it wraps back to one w goes in the opposite direction so it'll actually go up the top window but down the list so from one hitting w will take you to four again to three hit w again to two and then back to one and you notice that the names changed as i went through all these uh... these are the default names and if i hit the x key for since to highlight the field that it's sorting on you see that by default uh... the first field group sorts on c percent cpu and if I go down to 2 and hit X, it sorts on job, which is per process ID. Go down to 3 and hit X, and it's sorting on memory, percent memory. And if I go down one more to 4 and hit X, it's sorting on user, and the name says user up there. Pretty simple. You, know, you can uh, use pretty much any command in the, in the individual field groups to customize your areas, your field groups that are available to you. Uh, and then also take note that and the task area is unique to each field group. So if I'm on field group 1 and I hit 1 for my task area to show the multiple CPUs, and then I hit A, you're going to see it goes back to the other task area. Right there. <coughs> and I can hide the mem memory on field 2. And if I go back up to 1, you see that the task area for 1, the summary area, is assigned to 1. Summary area assigned to 2 right there. So that's, uh, that's pretty handy to know and you, you can see different summary areas and you can configure this however you want um, so that's how you navigate and get into the field groups by pressing capital A and then A and W for navigation now you can hide individual field groups by pressing the minus key and it'll hide that field group and then it'll expand the other field groups so that they take up the the remaining space but you notice that I'm still in the upper left hand corner I'm still on field group 2 so it's navigable but it's not visible and my task area is still for field group 2 so I can reshow field group 2 by pressing the minus key so I can toggle it on and off now there's another option with uh, showing and hiding that if I hit the underscore key it shows any of the field groups that are that are currently hidden. So if I hide two and I hit underscore, it shows me two. But if I hit underscore again, I'm back to uh, the non hidden groups. So if I go down to four and I hide that, so on one and three right there, if I hit underscore, it shows one and three right there. So those are uh, the hidden field groups and I can go back to one. So you can you can expand field groups and, and like one and three on one screen, three and four by hitting the underscore key and if I'm in here and I hit the minus key it re uh, reshows three on the initial screen and I hit two whoop, 
Got to go up to two and hide it there. It re-shows it back on the other screen. So you kind of like, the underscore toggles between views, like a hidden view and then the non-hidden view. So that that's how that operates. Now, if you try and... If I hit the capital A again, shift A, and back in here in the field group, if I try to hit the field group keys again, uh, any of those field group keys like navigation A and W, it tells me that those are disabled and it requires A mode. And if I hit underscore or minus, those commands are disabled. So I can only use those in this mode. Um, another thing that you can do is you can use G to navigate between them. So if I press G, it asks me which field group do I want to be in. I hit 3, and it shows me up there I'm in field group 3. So if I were in the full mode and I hit G, it says, what field group do you want to see? It will actually show me the different field groups in, um, in top full screen mode, so if I actually wanted to switch between them. So they are available, but you just can't really navigate between them in full screen mode. You have to use G to do that. So let me go back to one, and let me get back in the full field group mode. Now, if I wanted to change my field groups, let's say this is called job, and that really, you know, it's not telling me that it's navigating on... I switched it to memory, so let me put it back to job. Come on. Ah, oh, I forget what is, what is job. Uh, toggle between different ones. Uh, let, me, let me go like this. Da, da, da. Okay, let's get it back to there. Uh, I can change that by hitting capital G, and I can name one to three characters, so I'll call it PID like that and now p2 is called pid so it's named after what it's actually sorting on and i could have done the same up at the top for one and called it cpu i could have just hit capital g and called cpu and now it tells me that it's sorting on cpu so you can name them whatever you want to as long as it's three characters so that's pretty much alternate display mode and it's pretty handy now let's talk about syntax or color highlighting. You can toggle color highlighting on and off by hitting shift Z. I'm sorry, that that's the mode. Hold on a second. If you hit Z in any one of these fields, it'll turn on the syntax highlighting or color highlighting right there in Z. If I'm in full screen mode, um, it will still retain whatever field I was on last in full screen mode right there those colors now I can change the color scheme by hitting shift Z uh, and for capital Z and it, th this tells me what to do up here in this area it shows what your choices are going to look like and down here it says okay select target is uppercase letter so I want to change the summary area so I'll hit S capital S and notice down here it says change this target to S and then color one of these eight colors right here. So let's choose magenta and you can see that it changes up here. So any one of these things that I change, capital T, let's go with uh, blue and capital M for messages and prompts, let's go with green. And then finally H for column headers, let's go for yellow. And I hit enter to commit and notice that, well, it really didn't change the the yellow there of my headers uh, h3 what did I choose three yellow yeah so it's probably compacted by the highlighting I think highlighting is three is yellow also so let's change column area to black horrible color to display black on black. Now you can't see it, so that's what you do. And, and if you don't like your color scheme, you can always change it, and if you, if you need to get rid of it quickly, you can just press the Z key to get it back. So that that's how you, you change color scheme mode right there, and it's pretty handy. Now also, you can turn on bolding 
of different fields, turn it on and off by pressing capital B. And notice that all the important information or stuff that's changing gets bolded and the field that I'm highlighted on is bolded right there that I'm sorting on when I had the X key in there. Uh, if I hit X now, it really doesn't do anything because I've turned off bold syntax. So it shows me right there, uh, I have to have bold on to see what the syntax or the, the, the X key is showing me what columns is highlighted on. Now let's say you really trick out your top session, you really like it, and you want to keep it. Alright, so let's turn color back on. Let's go and re-establish the column headers to something a little more sane like cyan and hit enter. And let's say I like this and I want to keep it. Well, I can save right out to a top RC file by pressing shift W. And then when I quit this right there, it will have a top IRC which is a binary file so you can't really look at it but if I run top again it's going to start me back where I was before for my top RC if I don't like it I could just do top RM top RC and hit top again and I'm back to my defaults of the, where it used to be so that my friends is top alternate display modes and color highlighting that's the final episode we're going to be doing on top. I hope you learned a lot. I certainly did. Top is a very useful utility. Remember, um, read the write-up and listen to the audio by heading over to the website. Thank you very much, and you have a great day.